Check it out. It's a giant top load log boiler. And this has been a long time coming since we've been running this thing now for three seasons. And a lot of folks are like, hey, uh, we want more details about it. So I'm just gonna do a walk around, share my thoughts about this boiler and uh, kind of how it works and how it works for me and how we kind of use it. So um, we'll start with how you open it because this has got this bar here and you just can swing it and the lid opens up. Go like this. And this has a locking mechanism here that is on a pivot. So it is locked right now so that it will not, the lid will not be able to close. So this is the, I'm gonna turn the blower off right now so we can see it, but I guess you can see how the blower is blowing in here right now. So I turn the boil art, the blower off when I'm loading it so it doesn't just flame up. But you can see here, this is the kind of the goal that you're looking for. You want coals. It's just like a normal wood stove, right? Where it's like, you don't need flame, you need coals, hot coals. That's where your main heat uh, storage is. So the blower blows in through that grate that's underneath there and it transfers in kind of a trough that's underneath. That trough comes out the other side over here and turns into the ashtray that you pull out. See that? See all those ashes? So you can pull this whole tray out and go and dump it. We use our ashes on, in the garden and we use it in the chicken coop and we spread it in the driveway for, you know, melting ice and all that. But, so this right here is what we want. We want just like a bed of coals. I, I threw a skid steer bucket in this earlier this morning. It's like, uh, is it like two o'clock right now? Um, so just kind of push these down, move them around. There you go, that's so flat. This is a product that Council Tool makes that we're gonna be start uh, uh, offering on our website, but it's like a roof hook for fire, but it works great for moving logs around in there. Firemen for getting into roofs, breaking windows, all that stuff. So, but anyway, so with this, we like to do multiple kinds of wood in here. Uh, I burn ash or oak. Uh, right here, you can see we've got these mini bolts. This is basically off the pulp truck you get eight foot sticks, this is cut into thirds, uh, roughly. And then we're able to dump that in. So when we've got a good bed of coals like that, we can dump them into the stove and uh, and then we will be able to go ahead and um, grab some split stuff. Cause it's kind of good to have a combination. So I'm gonna dump these in right now and show you how this, how this loads up. So there you go. You can see how they kind of just roll in there. This bottom, of th this is a big barrel in here. There's a water jacket on the outside, but the uh, the firebox is a big round barrel. So the stuff kind of lands in the front and it doesn't want to roll necessarily in. So you kind of got to push it in and uh, you kind of want it like this. You don't want it stacked, or at least I don't, uh, so that air can get in there. That'll help with the uh, ignition of the stove. So I'm going to close this, let it, choke out a little bit. This stove right now is heating right around 3,200 square foot of relatively poor insulated space. You can scan over to this. That's the building. So that's our workshop and uh, office area um, where we do all the dirty work that is for Whiskey River grinding, welding, all that fun stuff. So um, this building, is heated by this boiler. So this is uh, this is a little damage that it took when we were getting it onto the uh, slab. This thing is heavy. I don't remember what it is, dry weight. It says on their website, it's like 4,200 pounds or something like that with nothing in it. And my, my 
This kit's here. 242 b3 is just not big enough to pick it up like in one shot so i was going back and forth and i got this tin but this is just tin you can see this is an insulated thing in here it's just tin it's just siding so we'll, we'll be putting new siding on there and, and you know whatever so um easy fix the there's a seal there's a rope gasket that goes around the outside of this it leaks sometimes uh or if it's if you fill this full of like wet super wet stuff the steam will kind of leak out of there right now it's not um going because i've got the blower off but every once in a while you've got a little bit of a ceiling issue it is what it is um yeah i've only got just a four foot extension on that chimney which is a little crooked after i forked it off it it's like clunky it like clunks forward clunks back so i'm gonna have to get a strap around that and pull it like anchor it in some way the stack i think recommendation was if it's over uh, over four foot worth of extensions you need to have that but i thought it'd be fine it's not but whatever so let's go over to the mechanicals these are still some things that were working out because we just got this onto the slab like a few days ago right before it started snowing so um but i'll go through the mechanicals we've only got one loop hooked up but we do have three buried uh just in case we decide to put an addition on the shop or whatever and we want in-floor heat right now it's ran through registers but the biggest uh thing in our comment section over the short form stuff has been, how, how do you pipe the heat? Like, do you have a big hole in the ground or a big tube in the ground that pumps the heat? This is heating hot water. So like, this is hot, right? This is hot water coming out of the tank into this pump. This pump pumps it down this line into that red line. And then it goes underground inside of a, well, inside of a tube like this. You can see actually right down there, you can see the, the red and the black, right? And it's insulated wrapped buried four and a half feet down here and then goes over to the shop and then i'll show you later uh what that looks like inside but then it goes through the registers and then is pumped back and then it comes back and into this line and dumps into the top of the tank so that's how the pump works the blower here is thermostatically controlled so this is the blower and the air comes through here, it turns, and then it goes into that trough that we, we saw earlier on, in the video. So we've got another loop here, and then I have another uh, ability to put another um, pump off of this. Like I said, we can grow into this boiler if we want. So um, you've got power at outlets here. This uh, turns on and off the uh, blower. And this is their new thermostat. I have uh, just recently put it in. Uh, at the end of the season last year so you've got your set and like this is the current water temp and this is what temperature it gets to when and then when it gets to that temperature it cuts the blower off so there's some regulation some high and low regulation on that but um yeah it i'll be mounting it somewhere in here i'll probably just zip tie it somewhere in here so that has uh the ability i think to have an app and you can connect to wi-fi which is super cool so when you're inside and you're like, huh, I wonder how the boiler's doing. I wonder if I need to throw some stuff in. And it's a weekend and you're sitting in there watching cartoons and eating Cheetos or whatever. You're like, ah, I should go out there. I don't know. And then you can just open it up on your app. I don't have the app, but I will. And maybe I'll do a video showing you that. So um, yeah, it's a little messy in here, but we'll be cleaning that up here soon and yada, yada. But yeah, it comes with a uh, diagram. The model number of this machine is a 6224, LB6024. Um, and then, yeah, you've got this and then some rules and all that. So. That's how that works. Um, we put it on a six inch thick slab. This, uh, this slab is pretty overbuilt for this, but we're not sure if we're going to continue to stay with a top load boiler or if we're going to do a front load like I've had in the past. So we wanted to pour it nice and thick so we can drive the skid steer on and be able to forklift totes on here. So overbuild it. If we're pouring it, we might as well pour it thick. So even though this thing's not like bouncing around on here, um, might as well have it a little on the thicker side. So that's that. Let's go inside. Um, and while that thing's kind of choking down, let's go inside and we will show you guys how the register works. Oh, actually right here. Let's show you how it stabs in. I've got a box to install here to kind of box this in and insulate it. But this is where the pipes come into the building. There was an existing hole in the shop, so that's uh, pretty cool. So plywood box that I've got half done that will be here and I'll fill it with spray foam. Help, it'll help with heat loss coming into the building. 
All right. So this is the one hanging register that's in this big section. We've got this uh, 14 foot tall, 16 foot tall ceiling. I can't remember exactly what it is. But the, uh, right now we've got it just plugged into the wall. There is a thermostat that we have that we can plug it in, plug into the outlet, and then the uh, cord for the um, blower plugs into that thermostat and it regulates itself. But right now we're trying to melt the roof off um, so that we can uh, uh, get some stuff off the roof that froze. I don't even know what the, why are we trying to melt the roof off? So we can tarp the roof. So we can tarp the roof. Anyway. Uh, so that's on full blast right now. It's just constantly running, and I just wanted to work the kinks out of the stove, so I've got it running full bore. But it's just a hanging Modine unit. At, above it is a uh, propane unit that used to be in this building, and that's how this building was heated. Unfortunately, the floor is not heated, so um, it's just all heat and hot air. So I put a fan in here, and we kind of circulate air around in the winter, and that really helps. So, um, yeah, pretty simple system. You can see the lines here, those two plastic lines, those come in at the, and in and out. So back to the boiler. Uh, now that it's kind of choked out, we're gonna put the bucket on the skid steer, pick up some of that. Right there you can see all of that uh, ash, uh, split ash. It got super dirty. We had a bunch of dirt work done and dirt got into it. So we've just been we pulled out all the nice stuff for our indoor stove and to sell, and we're just throwing the rest of it, the dirty stuff in there. Stuff that we, it's just not nice enough to sell. We do sell firewood, um, and so that this is kind of a nice thing to throw the nasty, nasty stuff that's not worth splitting, um, and or the dirty stuff that just doesn't look presentable when you do sell it. So some people don't care, but we don't sell boiler wood, so we, because we just use it all ourselves. So I'm gonna put the big bucket on, and I'll pull over there, and we will get uh, a bucket load of ash and uh, toss it in and then we'll talk about the details of efficiency and talk about uh, kind of how it works in uh, my lifestyle. So one thing that's worth mentioning is a 72 inch bucket and that's a 60 inch door. So you've got like a foot on the side of your bucket where if you've got wood over there, it's going to miss the door and hit the side of the boiler. Kind of frustrating. I mean, I guess I could get a 60 inch bucket and get exactly the width of the door, but that's just is, is what it is. What are you doing? What are you doing? Drink. Drink. Yep. So, um, yeah, so the, the distance of the bucket is kind of frustrating, you know, like if the door was 72 inches, it'd be a lot easier. I feel like standard, standard uh, it's a standard thing, 72 inches. Um, God damn it, buns. Chill. You haven't been played with for days. You're acting like, acting like you haven't been played with for days. Stay. Second toy onto the roof of the skids here today. So anyway, what I was saying was the bucket uh, is 72 inches. So either you have to get a narrow bucket or, you know, it'd be nice if the boiler was a little bit bigger in the top. It is what it is. Uh, you don't have to dump it in, you can hand load, so. But with this split stuff, this stuff is perfect for throwing on top of what we just put in there. So there's coals in the bottom, logs, cap it with the top stuff. And uh, if we chop that thing full, it's gonna be great for until next mor tomorrow morning. So, and it's only, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock, um, once we're done with this. So it's kind of a, an advantage to this thing is you can kind of like walk away from it. So it ends up being one skid steer bucket in the morning and then about two skid steer buckets in the afternoon. Um, sometimes on super, super cold nights, just so that, uh, it doesn't get burned all the way down at night. I'll stop, I'll jump out here at like 10, 10 30 at night and throw some, uh, a couple bigger pieces in just to get, keep it going. So, um, but yeah, that's how that is. So I'm just going to fill the bucket kind of to the side and leave like a foot on the side and that'll help with, uh, getting them in the stove. I don't like putting rocks in there. I don't like putting, uh, you know, junk in there. We don't burn anything besides wood um, in there typically. Uh, the, but I suppose you can. There's a lot of guys who own these wood boilers that, that heat off a of coal. We don't have a bunch of coal available to us here. 
in northern Wisconsin that kind of costs a bunch to truck in. And uh, it is somewhat close to where we are and we're typically walking around outside the stove um, and just working outside on firewood. And um, you know, this is my home, so I don't like to have, coal just puts off a, uh, a different kind of smoke that's not really that great to breathe in. So I don't I prefer not to do that. But if you are burning this in an area that you don't care about that, or you know you have a, uh, uh, it's a remote area that you're nowhere near the smoke, burn the coal. So, um, if I lived in Appalachia, I probably would burn coal because it's more available um, than than it is here in northern Wisconsin. So we've got plenty of wood, plenty of trees. Um, We've got five acres here. There's probably 80 cords of dead, dead standing slash dead uh, down wood in the in our woods that we can pull out and use at any point. So that's kind of allows you to have the freedom away from the uh, utility companies. We're on propane here, and propane is not cheap, guys. Um, and it's also susceptible to market fluctuations. Um, unlike firewood, firewood's kind of just like the same price, um, especially if you make it yourself. Obviously, different firewood producers sell firewood for different prices, but we uh, we have it available for us, and we can always just go into the woods, and go cut it. So this is what I call free heat. Free heat. You can see how that's been. But mostly steam that's coming out of there from those logs that we put in. So let's let that air out a little bit. I got goggles that I wear to keep the smoke out of my eyes, um, but I don't have any, I don't have them right now. They're in the house somewhere. All right, so you kind of want to fill the voids with the small section, small spots, and in that back corner, we have a big void. There's some down in here. So I'm actually going to come in, dump the bucket, and then just kind of sort and throw to make the space for the door to close, but a combination of both logs and splits up. I'll show you how it dumps. So, as you see, a bunch of stuff ends up on the ground, which is just how it is. It's discouraging, but let me get out of the swamp here. So, you only have this like small window of opportunity because this is tilted, right? So, so like the opening is actually quite small to be able to hit. Uh, with the big logs, it works great. But if this was a little bit more flatter, you'd be able to have a bigger opening and a bigger target to hit. So you end up with a bunch of stuff on the ground, especially when you're trying to chalk it full. It is what it is. It's like still better than having to haul the stuff by hand. Our old boiler, we used to have to use a cart or a sled to pull it over to the boiler. <laughs> I'm just filling that void in the back and you'll see how fast this stuff just disappears. The, uh, into the abyss. So that's one skid steer bucket and one fork load. And then we just close this up. Like that. And watch the uh, top as I turn the boiler on. Or turn the blower on. Yeah, it starts smoking. So that's the uh, kind of how the boiler works. This is how you fill it right here. You got this hole, and this is a float. There's a ball on the end of that stainless ball, and that uh, that's kind of shows you if it's steaming out or not. We haven't had too many issues with it overheating this time of year, and that new thermostat's been helping. I don't know if I have it set differently, or maybe my old thermostat was having an issue with with it, but the first year that I had this stove, 
not great. It was boiling over all the time. So, um, but yeah, you can add water to it throughout the season if you need. All right, so the this boiler is probably not for everybody. This is more of a commercial boiler made for putting into big or industrial boiler, I guess, if you will, uh, putting into big workshops and spaces like that. Um, this is too big for most homes. This, they there's other boilers on the market that are great for um, for homes. And yes, this is a lot of work. I'm young. Like I can do this for years and years to come. I know there's a lot of guys in the comments that are always like, ah, it's too much work. It's too much work. But like I save about $6,000 at least a year in propane uh, at the current market value uh, by just putting firewood, like splitting firewood. We spend two weekends with buddies. We make a bunch of wood specifically for the boiler. And then also I have the logs. I really don't have to do much work in. I just have to buck them up and move them over. I'd say I spend at the most an hour a day on this, but, but most of the time it's 20, 30 minutes. So 20, 30 minutes and you, and you basically cut your heating expenses down to, you know, 1500 to $2,000 a year, a season. So I'll take that. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, um, we got this from the logboiler.com. We bought it from them. We're not sponsored yet or anything by them. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as, uh, as far as technical information and such, uh, this is their smallest boiler. They have other larger boilers for uh, other industrial applications and farms and things like that that you guys can check out on their website. So, yeah, that's that. Now we get to do the shenanigans where we get a bunch of views on the shorts. And uh, so if you're watching this video, the long form video, and you've got some people in the comments saying dumb stuff, it's just argue with them because that's the uh, that's how it works. They came over from the short form videos where we, uh, where we get to do fun stuff with the boiler. So be good, stay sharp, and uh, see you next time.